And welcome back everybody here in Twitch and also on YouTube for another edition of Esper Angels. We played this one a couple nights ago um, where we, we tried it out for a donation deck that um, we made some changes at the end of the video. And so these are these were the changes that we made at the end of the video. Um, and so we wanted to kind of run it back and, and see. The, the biggest change is putting in Thought Erasure in the, in the two drop slot. We kind of struggle with not having enough plays early in the game. Um, and Thought Erasure is just an amazing card. You know, it's good against everybody. It The Surveil uh, kind of gives us a little bit of uh, card selection there to either help us hit our land drops or find threat, depending on what we need. I think it's just a perfect card to have on turn two for our deck. Um, and for the most part, everything else is just about the same. We got a 26th land. That was something that was... Uh, a problem because you know we we have to hit four and five lands like we had to get to our fifth land drop moved immortal sun over to the sideboard and that's kind of about it for what we did here so it it played pretty well last time and uh let's let's try it again uh this time yeah i'm i'm most likely moving back to the dallas area later on in the year like we're talking about um not a not a hundred percent sure i certainly want to move somewhere where it's warm i could move you know basically anywhere with my job just being here in my room and uh streaming you know so i can i can really move anywhere but i think probably moving back to dallas i have a lot of friends there so All right, so we're playing Esper Angels now, so all these lands are good. <laughs> we did just play an aggro deck with Tithe Taker, so it's like, wait, five, five, five mana, two Tithe Taker? That's not what I want, but it is what I want, because... Um, we want to hit our land drops. <laughs> so many angels in our deck. Look at all these angels. Oh, we just drew one. Till. Cool, yeah, you're moving back in a couple months. Nice. Going to Houston. Blue white control. Well, Tithe Takers are pretty nice here where we don't have to worry about them countering stuff. You got a spot in California? California would, wouldn't be a bad place to live. I certainly need cheap housing, you know, I don't I don't make too much with just being a full-time streamer. It's just kind of how it is. So like I'm not I'm not going to be moving to like the city of Dallas or any of the suburbs. Like I'm not really trying to do that. I'm going to be be moving out in the country like you know a half hour hour away, kind of deciding if I want to go like south south of the city, north, west, you know, like which direction. The country works out pretty well for me, too, with uh, the dogs being able to run around and everything outside. So, no, yeah, I won't be going to, like, McKinney or anything like that. Yeah, I have two dogs. They don't... You don't see them on stream, really, because they stay out in the living room. Because Hawk, Hawkeye doesn't like the dogs. They scare them. Um, Puppy is a Sheena Inu mix, Shiba Inu mix, and, um, Harvey is, I think, like, I think some kind of mix of an, like, an Australian Shepherd, or, I don't, I don't remember exactly what, for Harvey. Yeah, the Shiba, yeah, Puppy's awesome, yeah. I absolutely love Puppy, and of course love Harvey too. Har Harvey, I feel like, helped train Puppy because I had Harvey first. No, I don't, I don't think it's worth playing the best of three ladder. I don't have any desire to do that. The... 
gold EV and what and your just what you win EV and everything is better uh, playing the events. Than trying to do ranked stuff. And the opponent's dead. Tapped out. Seraph and Angel of Grace should be able to kill them. I may do some ranked queues. I, I'm not planning on doing it too much. Maybe we kind of go back and forth some. Like maybe I'll do a ranked queue every other day or every day or whatever. Like that's. Um, that's about all I was thinking of there. So, Dawn of Hope's probably, like, their one win con. Do we think they're playing Teferi? So, if, if they're Bant Nexus with Dawn of Hope, do they have Teferi as well? I really like Mardu Angels. We've We've always done really well with the deck. I think it's pretty strong. More than likely to ferry. Yeah, Immortal Sun's just kind of like card advantage, but yeah, honestly, we may not even need Immortal Sun. That's a good good point. I've certainly seen people play Bant Nexus without Teferi, but yeah, that could be wrong. Maybe they are. Uh, Mortify, like, so they their deck's built around enchantments, and Mortify is good removal for the enchantments, so I want to have all the Mortifies in the matchup for all their enchantments. Like they have just lots of different ones. Like that's that's what we want to interact with. Um, this hand's like okay, but I don't really think this hand is interactive enough. And I think our opponent's deck is, is built to beat two ones and three threes. So let's go ahead and shuffle. And draw a new six, and this six looks a lot better. We're going to be stuck on mana a little bit. But I'm not shipping in a gate, though. I have the Mardu Angels deck, but I haven't had to use Spyglass yet. What's a good usage for it? You want to play it against Teferi and Vivian. That's what you got it in there for Teferi and Vivian. Um, keeping negate available here. I'm kind of worried that, like, I go Thought Erasure. They... You know, make them discard whatever, and then they, like, resolve, like, Wilderness Reclamation. Kind of thing. No, I wasn't surprised at all with the results over the weekend. Lots of red and Sultai certainly makes sense. Those are a couple of the easiest decks to put together. A lot easier for them to Nexus whenever they have mana.
Do you think Marty will come around? Yeah. Yeah. The thing about like the three color mid range decks is it takes a little bit of time. You know, we're we just had the release weekend last weekend. It takes a little bit of time to kind of put together the um, the three the different three color mid range decks. I did not protect myself against a Teferi. All right, one ones. Hmm. Kind of want to counter that, but I'm just going to get Angel of Grace in play. Rude. Hmm. Well, now I regret not just casting the Angel of Grace in response. I'd still want to keep up negating in case they had Search for Escanta. Like if they would if they would have found Search for Escanta. Alright, we got another threat, we're good. <laughs> An angel dying and becoming two ghosts? It's a really special angel. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And I don't think I activate Resplendent Angel. Ah, uh, the spirits are mourners. Okay. Yeah, the angel has a big soul. There's a very solid Bant Nexus deck. That was number two at SCG and also in the latest 5-0 list. It runs three Settle and three Teferi main. Yeah, I... That's, that's something I've been saying for a while, that I think that the Bant colors have basically all the tools that you want um, but just making the making the decks and tuning them take some time when life becomes 10 from 5 will it trigger resplendent yes it would yep um, resplendent yeah it does changing your life total counts as life gain so if we were at 5 and we would do the resplendent the Angel of Grace, it would trigger the, uh, if we did, if we did that, it would trigger Angel of Grace, yes. I have a Mortify for that now, so don't need to counter that. All right. Got the first one. Felt pretty good having, you know, Discard spells, counter magic, felt pretty good. Yeah. No, I won't be doing any ranked, ranked draft tomorrow. Um, I already have all the rares in the, the newest set and stuff, and so I did some limited to, to kind of build my collection there for a little bit, but I don't know. I'm just going to be continuing to play uh, standard. So how come Mardu Angels is not listed? I I had it listed at first, but then we had a donation deck uh, to to come in, so it pushed Mardu Angels. 
so we are doing the other three. On the play... Gosh. I mean, I guess. Demir Guildgate. I wish I could have conceded first. Well, actually, I don't know. That's actually kind of a good hand for them to see. Zen Streams. Thanks for the bits. So it looks like we're just playing against Esper Control. I guess I could, I guess I could wait a little bit and not not pick him up right away. We can see if we're playing against... Uh, I guess this could be Esper mid-range. Yeah, Zenstream's getting on that leaderboard. No, I'm not going for the top 8 Mythic Invitational Qualification thing. Nope. Even playing 7 and 8 hours a day, like I do, that's not, that's not enough to try to get one of those slots. And it's also just not the... You'd have to play just best of one all day every day, and that's not something I want to do. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of creature decks, and our our deck's kind of slower. I can no longer and stand so that's what Kaya's Wrath is good against, all those creature decks. No, I mean, you you can't do ranked best of three and, and go for it. Just the amount of games you can play in best of one, it's just impossible to make it from best of three. All right, if we do this... We didn't see any enchantments from them. Yeah, it's it's a it's a volume type thing. Like you get points, you get like whatever. I don't know like the exact numbers, but you get like X number of points for winning and Y number of points for losing. Um, and like the more you play, the more you win. The the more you go up. So it's not just like a win rate. It's not like you play a hundred matches and your win rate seventy eight percent. And that's better than somebody who plays 500 and their win rate is 65. Now, the person who plays 500 at 65 is going to be a lot a lot better there. All right, so I don't think I need two Mortified, two Contempt, two Eldest Reborn. I think I can trim something here out of one of those. And I'm thinking Eldest Reborn. Keep a couple mortifies and stuff. In. All right, we get to play magic. We didn't play any magic last game. This time we do. I don't want them to uh, thought razor me and take that, so let's thought razor them. Okay, so I think I take Teferi. And then they go thought razor, take my either Tithe Taker or Resplendent, whichever one. We play the other. They probably take Resplendent. We play Tithe Taker. I mean, like, I can take their thought razor. Actually, I'm going to just do that. 
I like not letting them surveil here on the second turn. No, I don't do paper tournaments anymore. I used to. But no, I've moved into staying home, streaming full time. And so I'm here, you know, here every day from 3 to 10. Search for his Kanto is obviously a card I did not want to see there. And hope we hit this land drop so we get to Angel of Grace. Wow. That's bad for me. That's good for me. Um... This is just so many cards. It's three cards. Thanks, Sexian. Um, Taking the Perception, it's just so many cards. Especially, you know, they just cast at main... Like, I, I take Teferi, they just cast Perception main phase here of just Scry 3, draw 3. It's just so incredible. If you show remorse, I'll show remorse. Hold that thought! And we're just going to be attacking Teferi. Try and deal with it with that. I don't think we're we're not really looking good here. The search was Kanta they had they they drew on turn two has really just kind of destroyed us. That and then obviously the Kai's wrath was bad for us, but really this has Kanta. It's it's just the best you know turn two play ever for their deck. You just get Let's so much get selection. And and then after the selection, then just all card advantage. We can certainly draw like Sorcerer Spyglass and name Ascanta. That'd be nice. We get to kill this Teferi. Hey. Better than you getting on that bits leaderboard too. Thanks, Batter. And so if they have cast down, they can kill the tithe taker. If their last card is exactly cast down or moment of craving or something like that, that's, I just can't really risk it. We gotta kill Teferi. We will meet again. They still had absorb mana available. Oh, they did not have Absorb Mana available, because it's Scythe Taker. Right. Could have resolved Angel of Grace. I am not going to sit this one out. Keep up the pace! Of course, we could have been walking into a Wrath, but... Could have at least had Angel of Grace on the battlefield. I 
I won't let yeah, you Abs win. Yeah, it'll be our first time playing Abs and Angels. First time playing both Abs and, and Naya Angels. Made those earlier today. So I'm seeing what they get here with the Ascanta. If they, you know, if they get a Kaya's Wrath. All right, so they have a Mortify. I think I'm still gonna resolve this right now. Hurry! That turn two has Kanta. Wrecked us. Alright, one and one. So we beat control once, lost to control once. I think my biggest regret from that game was taking the Thought Erasure uh, with my first Thought Erasure. I think that's that's the biggest regret I had with that game. I did I not change the mana base? No, we're just we're just playing two swamps, right? Because we have Kai's Wrath. Okay, all right. No, that's that's fine. That's fine. Um. Mardu got bumped because of the donation deck. Well, we're playing against red, though. We still have, like, a good hand here. Even though we have a five-card hand, this is certainly a good hand if we can, you know, hit our land drops. Um... Yeah, I, I don't think I should have taken that thought rate that thought erasure with with mine last game. I think I needed to take one of the five drops to fairy or for cognitive perception. Strominator, what's up? Doing good. Got a bunch of bunch of angels decks today. We're gonna be casting many a resplendent and angel and Lyra Dawnbringer. Land drop, please. Bleh. This is a, maybe the worst draw in our deck. Like, negate would have been better. Might as well just use a dive down. Just to keep a 1 1 chump blocker around. Well, that'll work.
Do they just draw another three damage burn spell? Steam can. down to two after this. We need to have like, we need to draw land, play Sarah for the scales. We need our opponent to draw like three or four lands in a row. And then we need to draw like you know, we need to draw a second land and Lyra Dawnbringer. Alright, by three or four, I'm looking at like five or six lands in a row for the opponent. They can, gr they can draw a creature now. Land or a creature. Um, Esper Angels against Mardu Angels, uh, Esper is better against control decks, and Mardu is better against aggro decks. Oh. That'll do. Alright, let's try not mulling to five. We've had... A ton of Molda Fives today. This is only our second deck. We've been Molda Five all the time. I think that's our fourth Molda Five already. Um. All right, I probably cannot play. I can't play all like all these dive downs, duress, negates, thought erasures. I can't just play all those. And mortifies Rass's contempts. I mean, we're at sixty six. I gotta I gotta cut some of these. I'm I'm not cutting any creatures. I like I like all the creatures that I have, so I I need to just cut six spells. Um I think Duress and Thought Erasure, I do not want seven of those. In fact, this may be just not be this may not be a Thought Erasure matchup. I'm just, I'm just gonna take Duress out. So Duress is out, so that's it's now down to needing three out. I'm gonna take out one one Thought Erasure, one Negate, um, one dive down. Saving like you know, saving one of these angels, especially saving Lyra with Dive Down ends the game, but Yeah, we'll, we'll have one. It's a lot of mortifies. It's probably fine, though. No, I mean, I, I like Wrath quite a bit here because I don't play many early creatures. I just have one, one two drop, one three drop. But they do play a whole lot of creatures, like we saw there. I certainly like Wrath uh, quite a bit. Never mind, we'll just keep mulling to five. Hey Zephin. No, you, you can't you can't play Ethereal Absolution in this matchup. It is much, much too slow and, and doesn't even really work against Steamkin that much. Like we saw like that last game, like they just make a Steamkin a a four four. They don't have to change it. Our, our opponent's on five cards also, though, so... We're on a level playing field, even though, like, we're both on five card hands. And so I, I put the negate on the bottom because it's not a land, and hitting our, our fifth land drop in this matchup is really important with our five mana angels being so important. So... 
Got rid of that. And it's looking like it's working out. Let's kill that Steamkin. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I was planning on not mulling to five, but sometimes plans go awry. <laughs> Um, I think best of three ranked is out. That's what other people are saying in chat that it's out. Oh no, gutter snipe can actually that can actually do things. So I, I went thought erasure to help protect Dawnbringer. Hey Gomez, it's going good. All right, I'm I'm kind of glad they're just throwing that upstairs. Yeah, that's just not too necessary. I guess our opponent could be worried about counter magic, but that's just not that necessary from our opponent. They could have just killed this Dawnbringer, and I'd been in a lot worse spot. And opponents getting maximumly punished with us having a resplendent angel also. Gain five life, get a new angel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we know our opponent's not stream sniping. They're they're gutter sniping though. <laughs> opponents are only gutter sniping. Alright, we're going to game three. So they're playing Gutter Snipe and a lot of spells. We want Duress instead of... Now let's get another Thought Erasure. The thing is, is like these Thought Erasures are pretty bad draws. They're dead later on. It's something I'd only one on turn two. Cry of the Carnarium, I guess, is kind of nice. I guess we'll play some Cries. If they're playing Gutter Snipe and not Chain Whirler... I probably want some cries. Let's get rid of a Mortify. Get this Thought Erasure back. I really like... Yeah, Duress... Duress and Thought Erasure, that is kind of a tough choice. If I had more things to do on turn two, I would I'd rather have duress. But I really just don't have other things to do on turn two, and I, and I really like the surveil because either finding the land drops for our angel or or finding the angel, like finding Dawnbringer or the land drops for it is you know obviously really really important. So I think I'm valuing the surveil because I don't have other things to be doing on turn one and two. If I had like a good amount of turn two plays, then I certainly like duress more. Oh, yeah, absolutely, it's possible to make a competitive Angel deck. Yeah, absolutely. It's Angel decks have been the decks that I have been most successful with so far in Ravnica Allegiance. Um, we're not playing the Mardu Angels deck today, but the, Mar the Mardu Angels deck, I'm currently 20-3 and three with in these. Uh, but we're trying out some other Angel decks. So we have three draw steps to get an untapped land, and then we're playing Cry of the Carnarium on turn three. I think that's worth it. Just got your gold back with Mardu Angels. Way to go, Sculpted Mine. My basic planes game is not very strong in this deck. That's probably why we're struggling a little bit. Need to get some better basic planes. Play one spell. Play a gutter snipe. Gutter snipe. Gutter snipe. Gutter snipe. Uh, don't have another spell, please. 
tilt. Alright, so one Steamkin stays a stays alive. But we still get a two for one. Certainly good. We're gonna be taking another hit, but we got we got our land drop for contempt next turn, so we're doing just fine. Should play that last turn opponent. Get out of here. I don't want to play the Seraph of the Scales and my opponent have Lava Coil uh, like they had game one and hit me again. You know, we just can't take any more hits from that uh, from that Steam Ken. Is Vanifar standard playable? I think so. And I mean, it, I think you'd either play it in Sultai or Teamer. You're saying like which which shell? And, and I think you can kind of go either way, honestly. With that, I think either way is kind of fine. They both give you like Sultai has some better cards, but Teamer gives you uh, Rhythm of the Wild, which is amazing with it, and Rekindling Phoenix. You, know, you have some good cards in red, too, but you have a ton in black. Uh, I want to Mortify and have Negate available and just kill this Gutter Snippers. Nah, we'll just play Angel of Grace. Yeah, we'll just play Angel of Grace. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I decide like want to keep the mortify in case of um, experimental frenzy. Wish our opponent attacked with the gutter snipe. Wow, that's great. That's what the Angels decks do. Angels are really good against the red decks. I'll just go ahead and mark that as 2 1. All right, two and one. No, yeah, I don't, standard. Standard's not the only thing forever for arena. I think we will have new modes whenever we'll have cards rotate. Uh, we don't know exactly what those are yet or, or what the plan is. Um, yeah, they're a few months away from that. About about eight months, probably, from rotation. Probably like the end of September. So they have, they have some time still, but we don't know exactly what, what's going to happen then. All right, two and one. Ooh, we got 40 gems. It's a nice random card reward. Why do you think Esper, Soltai, or Bant are on top of the format while Maya, Abzan, or Jund aren't good enough? I... I wouldn't necessarily say that those other ones aren't good enough. I think they may be uh, later. It's just, it's very early in our format where, you know, people are still trying a whole lot of things and it's just, you know, like, I, I don't think that, like, Naya, Abzian, and Jun don't have, like, good enough cards to compete. I certainly think they do. It just, you know, it takes time to make the decks and everything. And um, a lot of people. A lot of people are playing the other color combinations right now. 
Um, a lot of people kind of gravitate towards what did well in a specific tournament or what's showing up in 5-0 lists. A lot of people play those and not necessarily, you know, take time to, to build something else. Um, you know, it takes a, like whenever you're making new decks and stuff, it, sometimes it takes a lot of losses and things to figure out what to do. What do I, Temple Garden? Do I need to Thought Erasure here? I don't think so. But yeah, I, I think that all those other color combinations have potential. We're still just really early in the format. Alright, History Banalia. Dovin and Luxodon. I do need that fifth land for Angel of Grace. Hmm. I'm gonna keep it. Swiftcat says, I regularly take my... I don't need to have dive down protect the... the Tithe Taker. Regularly take my Jun deck to 5-0 and 5-1 in the leagues. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I really like Angel of Grace. I think Angel of Grace is a really strong card. Yeah, I like it a lot. Love to build a deck for fun around Psychic Corrosion, but lack a lot of cards or necessary cards for a deck like that. So Psychic Corrosion is the mill enchantment, I think? Is that is that the one where when you, whenever you draw a card, they mill? I think. Okay, so... For that kind of deck, so I I played it. I played a blue white mill deck um, on stream actually before. Here I can show you after this match if I remember what I have here for a blue white mill deck. Yeah, so I think they have March of the Mul- I guess they didn't attack because of March of the Multitudes? No, they just didn't attack. Just in general. Uh, this is Ghost Rider by RJD2. Alright, here come some big creatures coming back at us. They can double block an Angel of Grace now. And take it down with these Thoptas. But I think... Oh wait, no. They they don't have any lifelinkers. So I guess they're just kind of dead. I guess they have to single block Angel of Grace and Resplendent Angel just to stay alive. Hey, we are spawn. Good morning.
All right, what you got, opponent? Yeah, you need a good amount of wrath effects in the mill deck to stay alive to the early game. <laughs> what you got? You got nothing. Alright, Kai's Wrath. Theoral Absolution. Certainly seem kind of good here. Duress Negate. Cut down on Dive Down. Uh... Trim one mortify. Certainly have these planeswalkers. What are the four cards though I want to take out? I do like Duress Negate a ton against them. See just taking out Tithe Taker. Bum, 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 bum. Let's try this. Oh, right. Cry of the Carnarium. I just I just overlooked it. You know, just just uh you know doing multiple things. Yeah, I, I, I certainly should be bringing in Cry of the Carnarium. Yeah, that, that should certainly be in. I just bought five twenty thousand gem deals trying to decide what packs to open. I liked that look at the angel deck the other day. Um for the Alright, you probably you wanna be bought you wanna be opening up the all the sets with dual lands. So I would say uh so what set doesn't have like uh Rivals of Ixalan does not have dual lands, don't open those. And um Was there another one? Um, does like Corset 2019 also not have dual lands? I don't think they do. So they draw a white source. Would I rather them play Amara or Dovin? I think I either take Amara or Dovin. I'm just going to take Dovin. Dixon's binding's kind of rough. I have Mortifies though, and I have the Negate. I'm gonna take the Dovin. Uh, yeah, I'll take the I'll take the land. No, I will not be competing there. So that's the problem with you know not taking. Or that, that was the problem with taking Dovin, was that if they did not hit the white source, then I could have had negate for Dovin. Well, that's alright, we got, we're able to contempt this thing. Get that out of there before it makes more 1-1s. One -ones. Double Depose Deploy. I 
Don't think I need to counter the one ones when we got our angels. Hey Dirk, things are going really good. Alright, really glad they didn't have Fifth Land and Tristani. I want to be able to protect Lyra with the negate. We'll see if we're able to. They also only have one card. So even if they have like a cleansing nova, destroy all creatures, uh, we still get a couple tokens from Seraph of the Scales, and then we have Resplendent Angel negate next turn. So there we go. Three and one. I'm liking this discard aspect of the deck. I'm liking these thought erasures. Why no? Why not vigilance on the scales? Uh, I guess I could have. It didn't really matter. But yeah, no, I certainly could have. It w I guess it would have been better. Oh, wait. Cancel. So for the person that was looking for the mill deck, I'll show you what I have here. Um, <laughs> no problem, Madfish. Uh, it's it's all good. Um, this is what I have, if you want to just kind of take a, sc a screenshot here. Um... And then the other sideboard card is two Immortal Sun. That's the other sideboard card is two the Immortal Sun. Or you can take the screenshot like that, and it's four negate is the other thing. So there's a Psychic Corrosion deck. No problem. I made a best of one version of Teamer Gates. All right, what we got? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I I would think you'd really want four Plaza Harmony. Uh, that life gain. I would think that's got to be a four of for that life gain. Little surprise there. Yeah, everything else looks pretty good. Kind of like the the mass manipulation in there and some negates. Negates are, are a good best of one card. And I like it. Hey, Engineer Girl, games are going pretty good. We've started with a lot of Mold of Fives. You know, it's just kind of one of those type days. Did you ever brew around a hand denial deck where you empty your opponent's hand? Yeah, I had one of those last format, um, the Grixis, Grixis version, call it Grixis Discard. Um, it was four Thought Erasure, four Disinformation Campaign, and then also Angraths at the top end as well. Alright, I'm going to just keep, keep playing my things right now. This looks like this is a... a a fog type deck, not really a wrath deck, so I'm not really worried about the wrath effect. Um, and my opponent can't have Teferi next turn, which is a card I'd be really worried about. So I'm just waiting, and I'm waiting a turn here, and then I think I thought Erasure this turn for Teferi, or maybe they do have Cleansing Nova. So we'll go and thought Erasure this turn. I guess that could have been Settle, so I probably should have 
Cloud Razor at first. Yeah, definitely should have just done that before attacking. Could have been settle. Alright, Nexus, Nexus, Revitalize, Grow. So I take Grow. Yep, we got our unmoored ego in our sideboard. That could be that could take out these next eye. In game two. I think the deck list for the Planeswalker starter decks are available. Um I think so. And I, I think Yeah, you, know, you could just kind of maybe Google search it, but um Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're available. I think maybe MTG Goldfish wrote up something about it. So another place to check. Hmm. All right, we got lethal next turn. Even with Revitalize gaining life. It's the thing. If I if I would have contempted an attack, we would not have had lethal through a revitalize attack, but now we do. No, I, no, I don't think that every deck with blue and black should have Unmoored Ego on the sideboard. No. I, I would not agree with that. I don't love Unmoored Ego in the format. It's it's, you know, an option, but I don't think it's necessarily that great of an option. Alright, looks like they're drawn towards a fog. No fog. No win. Alright, negate, cry, ego, spyglass, immortal sun, wrath, one contempt, Dawnbringer. Wait, they gotta be a Teferi deck, right? Oh yeah, dive down. Good call. I I, knew, I thought there was something else I was missing. Yeah, dive down. There we go. Really expect this to be enough, but we have draw steps. We got we got our mana base. There we go. We have our mana base taken care of, and now we just need to draw more interaction. Grow, frilled mystic, to fairy. I mean, I want to take Grow. Yeah, I'm just going to take Grow. 
Frilled Mystic is kind of annoying, because I don't get to counter that. That card's certainly annoying. Do you think Search for Kanta would be good in this deck to help you find Unmoored Ego, for example? No. No. We're only playing one Unmoored Ego. And that's not that's not really worth the whole card. Uh, to, to try to find it. I mean, I don't have tons and tons of spells in this deck. I mean, there there are a good amount, but... Search for Scanta is awesome in the, like when you get to like a you know like a real late game how you just you're gonna have like so much mana and you keep activating it and you keep finding answers so no matter what your opponent draws you have answers to it. That's what Search for Scanta finds answers like that really well. Um, and even even with like the Unmoored Ego thing, Unmoored Ego is goes down in value the later you wait, and so as Kanta trying to find it in Unmoored Ego later on in the game, it's not going to matter as much, most likely. All right, do they get their four, four land? They do. I know it's a little risky. Or, I mean, I, I use my only negate, and I have Mortify that answers that card. But that still just cuts off four mana for them this turn. I s certainly feel like that's worth it. There we go. Why no pump? I had two free angels because because of that right there. Keeping Mortify available for a Wilderness Reclamation. The angels didn't really matter. They have like a fog effect. We had like super lethal on the battlefield anyway. They're we very lethal. Ooh, we are four and one. This is our final boss. I just realized we have a final boss. Here we go. Yeah, it's our, our second time to beat Nexus in this league. Oh, love the hand. Yeah, I like our, our Esper deck here. We, we did lose one match to control, but I think we have a pretty good control matchup where we have, you know, we have a lot of tools against control at least in our deck. I feel we got kind of unfortunate with the one we lost where, you know, we thought Razor on 2 took whatever. I took, I I think I did choose wrong, but, you know, they didn't have Search for Kanta, and then they drew Search for Kanta, and that the Kanta was backbreaking. And then on 4, they found Akaya's Wrath the next two turns, which also was backbreaking. Down, 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 down. So I want my Thought Erasure to take cards like Vivian, Find Finality, um, Krasis, uh, even Chupacabra to protect these other angels. You know, we, we have some good cards to take. Nothing really on turn three. You know, like taking a Jade Light isn't necessarily the most backbreaking play. So I want to uh, want to go ahead and just get the Tithe Taker on the battlefield and wait on the Thought Erasure a turn where I can... I can let my opponent draw another card, and now, you know, just that extra card on top might have been something I wanted to take. Certainly casting it now, though, 
because I want to make sure I hit hit land drops. We beat control, combo twice, and mono red. Or, yeah. Yeah. One big thing with these angels decks is kind of finding what that we're looking for here is like which of these angels decks is kind of best positioned against uh, Golgari. That's certainly a, an important thing. Right? Yeah, I have a switch. I don't have the other, other uh, one. So yeah, I can't wait till FF Seven's back on Switch. It's gonna be nice. No, I don't think Ethereal Absolution is too slow against tokens because you like tokens could play a, a late game. Like, you have cards like Kaya's Wrath for the early game. Oh, I shouldn't play Seraph. I should probably play Res... Well... I'll just play it. I guess it, it's a really good Contempt target for them, but oh well. Do you know the lore of Angels in MTG? I, I do not know the lore of MTG of Angels from MTG. Do I think Esper Angels is stronger than Esper Control? Um. Hmm. Honestly, maybe. Esper control is kind of easy to attack in the post sideboard games. And Esper Angels has a lot better matchup against red. Um, it's like basically already pre boarded against red, but then you know it's not easy to as to attack because you have you kind of a, have a lot of different you know like you can you still have your removal, you still have your counter magic, you have other creatures, so it's, it's not like real easy to bring in sideboard cards for. Maybe. You know, Esper Control is obviously, you know, played thousands and thousands and thousands of times more right now, so, you know, it's, you know, obviously has a lot better results, because it's just kind of like me playing Esper Angels, and there's like tens of thousands of people playing as for control right now, but I could see it being the case. Is it possible to play a good Orzhov control deck? I I don't think just playing like if you're just playing Orzhov control, I feel like I feel like playing Mardu or Esper, basically either one, adding in another color uh, is worth it. I don't I don't think you gain anything from keeping the deck to color. Um, I think that playing Esper or Mardu is a better option. Yeah, Gates deck is certainly viable. Definitely. I have not played the four color gates deck yet, but we will be playing it on Saturday. Uh, I have a four color gates deck, you know, had that list that was uh, somebody donated for their four color gates deck to be played. So we'll be we'll be playing it on Saturday. The problem with killing Hydroid Crisis is find finality. I don't want them to get it back and make a bigger Crisis. Ugh. Why well, not have the mana to Thought Erasure plus Dawnbringer? I think it's certainly really important to Thought Erasure, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Well, it was it? Turns out, it was not very important. I was expecting like find finality or another crisis, uh, something like that. 
or just a removal spell for Dawnbringer. You know, like, you know, if they have like another removal spell, I want what it needs to take that. Yeah, I think you can play Gates without Hydroid Crisis, absolutely. I, I don't think Hydroid Crisis is a necessary part of the deck. Yeah, I think you can just re replace it with other things. It is a cool card, but yeah, some people can't afford them. You know, like they're really expensive. And I, I don't think you need that card in that deck at all. No, I don't have Shalai in this deck. Come on. That was the card Wild I wanted to animals take. animals I like. People? Not so much. No one said restoration was painless. Ah, uh, Vivian. Well, glad they attacked. We can just kill this small one. I could just contempt the small one. And then it's exiled and they can't get it back with fine finality. It does set me up better to play like a Seraph plus a Mortify. Um, of course, if they if they draw another Vivian though and go Vivian minus and kill this Angel, then I don't really have a good way of getting rid of the third Vivian. So that's basically a loss if they get a third Vivian. Attack first and then contempt Vivian if needed. I mean, it would certainly be needed. They they definitely chump block here. So I'd, I'd rather have their Krasis exiled. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to set up the possibility of having Seraph plus Mortify. And I just want the Krasis out of here forever. Not bad. We are not looking good against, against the third Vivian. Third Vivian would be really tough right now. You know, in a couple of turns, it may not be so tough, but this specific turn, third Vivian, would be very tough. Ah, Memorial of Folly, see? Got that Krasis out of here for good. But now, I'm not sure what I'm doing here, because... I guess I can Mortify on end step and attack for eight, put him down to one. Wild Growth Walkers, I mean, they do have the ability to gain a lot of life, though. Kind of out of nowhere. I didn't want to kill it then. They get it back. I could kill it on end step here. I guess so. Yeah, if they just spend their turn recasting Krasis next turn, that's not going to be good enough. Ah. Obviously, we draw the Contempt that would have just Contempted if I would have just waited and untapped. What's, what's, what Mardu question? I've already answered a lot of questions about Mardu today. I didn't, I didn't know that there was one I was avoiding. If you're asking about Marty of Angels, I was planning on playing that fourth today in our Angel lineup, but then we got a, a skip the line donation at the beginning of the stream. stream so uh, we had to, I had to move one of the Angel decks, and I've already played Mardu quite a bit, you know, more than these other ones, so I moved Mardu. If that was the question. All right, we got game one. 
Thought Erasure was crucial. Taking that that first Vivian from their hand was crucial. Um, let's see. I like Spike Glass and Mortal Sun. I like, you know, shutting off Vivian is just kind of all I really want to be doing. Um, I don't think I want Duress. I think just the fourth Auto Erasure is good enough. I don't want Duress. I could certainly see playing the, the last Kaya's Wrath. The Tithe Takers kind of just don't do a whole lot. They do... They can just, you know, trade with, like, a Branch Walker or whatever, but that's about all they do. There's certainly been, like, bad draws, like, later in games where we just draw Tithe Takers that aren't doing anything. So if we if we bring in an extra Wrath, maybe we don't need those. We're going to be behind life total-wise, though. No, I'm not playing on more Ego for Krasis. No, that's... On more Ego... Their, their deck has plenty of other ways to win, plenty of other ways to get advantage. Unmort Ego is not a, a card you want to be playing in this matchup ever. So, no. Um, Absolution is certainly an option. You know, it, it's a little weak to Vivian, but that's that's certainly an option. I don't, I don't really know what I would take out for it, though, which is kind of the problem. I could take out, like, a Negate. But I think I like the negates. I like the dive downs, honestly. This is this is like the matchup for dive down with their Chupacabras, Vivian, stuff like that. Just play the angel and save it. This is this is like the matchup for dive down. Cry is good against Reaper. That's good that's a good call. It's tough, like Cry, absolutely. Like, a lot of the cards that we still had in our sideboard are, like, situationally good, which is, you know, it's, it's like, kind of the strength of Sultai. There's not, like, cards that are just always good. There's cards that are situationally good. And finding the 60 you want to put together is difficult. It's being a card that's always good, though. Maybe I just take this Krasis. We're going to be able to discard the Vivian with the next one, or it could have a negate for it. Not a land. I want, I want six lands and to play Immortal Sun. I think I, I didn't take Vivian because of being able to counter it with Negate also. Oh, looks like we're just taking it here. All right, and I'm, I'm still casting Thought Erasure because I need, I need lands. And so I want the Surveil to be able to look for a land. Yeah, Ego against Esper control is good there. It's not good against Sultai. Well, that was not the Jade Light we wanted to see. We wanted to see a 4-3 Jade Light because we have removal for it. We didn't want them just to get Divination Jade Light. Let's kill this thing. I'm not playing the Dawnbringer anytime soon into the chupacabra so otherwise so we're just taking we're just taking two a bunch from that jade light for a while until i get you know i'm playing the immortal sun first and everything like that Because I, so why did I take Vivian over the dog? I'm just not worried about the dog. The dog isn't really gonna gonna kill me. Like with me having a mortal son in my hands, I don't know. Like the dog, the dog's not gonna kill me. It kills an angel, but you know, it basically trades for an angel one for one and then leaves a two two, and I can I can deal with that. 
The Vivians and Krasises. Those can just generate a lot of cards. I do. I did have a negate for for a Vivian, but they could they could draw another Vivian. You know where I would have wanted the negate for the second one. I want to just take the the cards that can generate a whole lot of advantage. All right, so we're gonna contempt this thing, so it's out of here for good. And then we'll keep these. Negate and Mortify available. Yeah, Tikali's really good in this matchup, but when I'm playing like Kaya's Wraths also, it's kind of hard to find room for it because it is just a narrow card. But you're right, Tikali is great here. What do we want to do here? I guess it's time to start playing some angels. So I'll just have Resplendent Angel with uh, Flash and Angel of Grace, and then have Dawnbringer. <laughs> Imagine if these mana costs were real, right? Just white, white for for four, four Resplendent Angel. Yep, you can find my playlist on Spotify. Um, exclamation point playlist. There we go. What? Huh. All right. Well, they used they did use two cards to kill my resplendent angel. We got one mana spyglass. We got pithing needle spyglass. Uh, we don't really need to worry about. Man, they have another crisis. We don't have to worry about. Uh, Vivian, so let's just name Memorial to Folly. We're thrashing Brontodon's not a bad idea either. That's not a bad one. Hmm. Should I say Thrashing. They've already used one folly, right? Yeah, they've already used a folly. Spyglass doesn't do anything against Chupacabra or Krasis. Which is why we're not naming it. Those cards do not have any activated abilities. Oh yeah, no, I cer certainly played against Brontodons with this deck. That could could be an option. 
Uh, or the, yeah, like that, that'd be really bad for us if they have a Bronzodon and kill the Immortal Sun. Yeah, you can name any card. You know, we could name these other cards, but it doesn't do anything. I would, I would like to draw a dive down. Graces has been incredibly impressive here. We've exiled two, but that's that's all we can exile. I only have two contempts. I didn't really expect my opponent to block here, honestly. So yeah, I'm look. You know, this is, looks foolish for me now that they blocked. I actually expected them just to take this. But Mortify could just be like even bigger Kraysai, basically. You know, they I'm sure they have you know, if they get this Krasis back, they can just, you know, make even bigger Kraysai. So I just didn't deal damage there. Makes me look silly. The reason why I didn't expect them to block is because theirs is a 7-7. Seven, seven. If they just untap Chupacabra, my Lyra, you know, then, then theirs is bigger. But, yeah. Because I don't think, like, I wasn't sure if they'd want to trade there. Um, because they're, then theirs would be a 7-7 seven, seven and mine would be a 6-5. So, like, they're trading their 7-7 seven, seven for a 6-5 kind of thing. Oh, gosh. Alright. I just need all... I should have just named Vivian again. Ugh. Oh, Assassin's Trophy doesn't do anything. You can't name Assassin's Trophy. But I, I should just name Vivian, probably, just to have, like, a backup thing. I named uh, Memorial to Folly. You can't just name a card and then them not be able to cast it. They still cast their cards. Naming Assassin Assassin's Trophy doesn't have anything to do. Alright, we got fortunate. Got Vivian out of there. That is the only Spyglass. I do have another Immortal Sun. Abzan's black, white, and green. Man, these crises have been really good. We're probably going to draw our dive down now. Yep, time for that Kaya's Wrath. There it is. They know about that swamp in our hand. Arch of Araska, here we go. Arch of Araska's good. Ah, dang. 
That's why when you have Archer Roska in your deck, you want to just keep playing your lands out. Yeah, I could have gained 7 life. I would have just used my Mortify earlier. So I'm certainly looking silly for not gaining that 7 life earlier. Oh, come on. Get out of here, Land War Elves. It's likely that last card's a removal spell that my opponent hasn't been playing. I should be drawing the card first. Can we draw it and have the Immortal Sun? Yeah. Yeah, I could have just gotten the Immortal Sun there. And been able to play that and Resplendent Angel and just had, had an extra power. Uh, they had Cast Down. Yeah, we're, we're drawing a lot of really good cards here, but that's, I mean, look at all the lands we have in our deck. I mean, that's that's what we're going to do is we're going to we're gonna draw into, so what happens, you know, just what happens whenever you draw so many cards like we did with Immortal Sun. Alright, at least we know our opponent is watching us. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, angels, angels are certainly expensive. That is true. Oh, uh, why didn't I draw in response? Uh, I forgot. I could have drawn that last, the second negate. We had one negate in our deck, or I had dive down. Also, I should. I definitely should have just drawn. Getting punished for that. <laughs> Y'all are considering that a punt when we like just can't. We are like miles ahead, and the negate's still going to be fine later. I didn't do Vigilance. Oh, absolutely, Immortal Sun against Golgari. It's it's the reason to be playing Immortal Sun in these kind of decks, is to stop Vivian for good and give you the card advantage to keep up. Nice, Marsh. I couldn't activate any more whenever I, I went to attackers right away. Oh, hey, look. Saving that negate worked out a lot better than, say, you know, if I would have just kept the, if I would have kept the uh, Lyra alive, probably would have been a lot worse. So it turns out saving the negate was perfect, because otherwise they would have got a crisis and drawn a million cards. Playing perfectly. Um, no, not after the attack order, before the attack still happens. I mean, you can, but it would already be attacked and attacking. Once you go into attackers, uh, you can't, um, 
you can't reactivate. You can't activate the. Uh, or I mean, you can't gain vigilance. Basically, that's that's what I'm wanting to say. You can't gain vigilance. Okay, so five and one. Uh, our opponent had a, a real slow hand that game, which which helped us quite a bit. You know, like they didn't have like their explorer stuff early on, and so we got to set up. Uh, we got to make them discard like a Krasis and a Vivian early and get to our mana, get a Mortal Sun out, and, uh, you know, that really helped. Their Krasis, you know, was keeping up with the Immortal Sun. Um, but we had we had some really good top decks. Uh, top decking the Thought Erasure to take their Vivian. Top deck the... Um, top deck the Kai's Wrath. And then, honestly, probably the other Kai's Wrath. We were probably dead if we didn't draw the other Kai's Wrath also, so... Yeah, and we got a 60, 60 gems and 2100 gold. Uh, our opponent did not attack into an Angel of Grace when there wasn't any reason for them not to attack unless they knew we had Angel of Grace that we just drew that turn. Uh, that's why we knew our opponent was watching, but that's okay. You know, like, that's just part of, like, streaming. Your opponents can watch you when you play. You can't really... You know, I can't really do much about that. It's it's fine. Um, so there we go. So, Esper Angels, we did lose to a control deck, which I th think we have a pretty good control matchup with all the all the Thought Ragers, Negates, Duresses, and everything. Um, but, uh, you know, just kind of one of those things where you can't discard the top of the opponent's deck. Uh, they drew... After us, after us thought erasuring them, then they found a search Rose Canta on turn two, and then Kai's Wrath on turn four, and both of those were hurt really bad. But honestly, this deck feels pretty good. I like where I like where the deck's at, for the most part. Um, I yeah, like you know, still want to play a little more with the deck before changing too much. Uh, we haven't really been using these Eldritch Reborns at all. I, I could certainly see getting rid of these, and honestly, I, d I don't know if Ethereal Absolution's worth it. It's pretty slow. I could see these these three cards are probably the, the worst three cards in the deck, or, or like probably the most unnecessary three cards. Um, but <clears throat> so we got you know we got pretty fortunate there to win that Golgari match. I think. Want to play some more against Golgari with it? See if we want to change anything. So, Thief of Sanity could be an option. That's honestly a, a good, a pretty decent card that could certainly be an option. Um, could certainly see playing some Thief of Sanities in the sideboard. You know, could could have that over these cards for sure. That's an option. All right, so Esper Angels looking strong. That's our first Angel deck today. We got Naya and Abzan here in just a little bit. If you're watching this later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to follow along for all of the decks. And I'll put the YouTube link here in chat as well. All the all the replays go up there on YouTube. Um, and uh, there we go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.